Get back to Doug Clinton with our apologies, founder and CEO of Intelligent Alpha. I guess it just begs the question, uh, how do we add in the promise of quantum computing and layer it on to, to AI? And, and what does it mean uh, for, for the, the, the tech group and even the, uh, the tech leaders, the, the MAG-6, I guess, if we, if we don't use Tesla, although that's a tech uh, stock too? I don't think it means a ton right now, Joe. I, I, the way that we're playing it, at least, at Intelligent Alpha, also at Deepwater, where we focus a lot at AI uh, on AI companies, is I think this is the AI moment. So for the next two to four years, all of these companies are going to be driven by what they do in the AI space and how they actually generate revenue from AI. Quantum, I think, is fun optionality, but we're just not going to see anything tangible from it in the next two to four years. And so it's a good story. But I think you really need to rely on AI products and revenues if you're making investments in the tech space right now. And, and so, uh, just to, to summarize maybe how you're, you're feeling or, or to encapsulate how you're feeling, the, the tech trade, while some people think is dead, if, if you assume multiples hold up at 28, these are still fast-growing companies. So you, could, you, you theoretically could just add the, uh, the earnings growth and layer that onto the stock price, and, and and that would be probably what eighteen to twenty percent growth this year in the in the Mag Seven, Maga Seven. That's right, and that's a conversation we've been having more. You think about there's an old saying about markets where markets are meant to frustrate the most uh, participants possible by doing what no one expects. Jesse I think Livermore. the consensus, yep. exactly, yeah, and, and I think the consensus coming into 2025 was this is the year of a broadening. This is the year where big tech slows down. And we're sort of asking, well, what if it's not? You go back to 23, expectations were for a recession. 24, expectations were for small caps to win. What if in 25, we do get what you just described, which is multiples hold steady for the mag six. You layer on the earnings growth and you do have stocks that are growing high teens probably. And that's a pretty high bar for the rest of the market to keep up with. Yeah. And uh There'll be some FOMO. I, I can feel it already. Uh, as these, it, it, you think of the law of large numbers, Doug. It's just hard to imagine stocks that are two, three, four trillion dollar market caps. But you know, a lot of times stocks hitting new highs hit more new highs. Stocks hitting new lows hit more new lows. I've seen that. They do, and I think the fundamentals in in the cases of these Mag Six companies are just so strong. They do support very large. Uh, enterprise value. So that 28 times multiple, that's sort of within the range of the last 10 years. It's roughly in the middle. It's not a crazy multiple, but it's healthy. And so again, you know, it's big numbers, law of large numbers. There's a lot of concentration, but they provide a lot of the earnings for the index as well. So when we talk about 30 plus percent concentration, you also have to look at how much of the earnings they provide to the index, which last time I checked was sort of in the mid 20s. So they're over indexing a little bit to earnings, but they deserve to be a very big part because they're a big part of the earnings story.